This is part one of the instructions on how to work with the data input and analysis tool. Here we will focus on the data input part of the tool. This is where you will be entering the information that you recorded using the observation instrument while you were conducting your observations. By entering that data here, your team will be able to ensure that all observational data is stored in one central place and that that data will be able to be analyzed by this tool using the analysis part of the tool, which will be covered in another tutorial. You can enter information up through row 7500 for it to be included in the analysis part of the workbook. In many of the categories in the data input sheet, there is a drop-down list in each cell to help you enter data or know what your options are. You may either select the proper option from the drop-down list, or you can type the text in yourself. However, some of the cells have controls on what type of data or what text can be entered. If you type in valid text, you will receive a pop-up window in Excel that will alert you that the text entered is invalid and to select a value from the drop-down list. It is imperative that you enter the data as it appears in the drop-down, letter for letter, in order for the data to be analyzed properly. The information you enter in the data input sheet will come straight from your observation instrument. Each record for your instrument should have its own row in the data input sheet. For example, I entered the information from record 6 in row 17. You should also remember to include the tallies that you made at the bottom of your instrument for your quick observations as their own records. The first section of the data input sheet is for the setup information, including date, the day of the week, the one hour time range your observation falls mostly in, the branch number that was assigned, and the target you are observing. The next four sections are for each potential pass the patron might have taken by the target. Each pass includes the notice that the patron gave to the target, the length of time spent interacting with the target, if applicable or recorded, the path taken by the target, and whether the notice was staff directed. If a patron was observed reading, then touching, then taking an item all in one pass, you should choose the most extreme interaction that that patron had with the target on that pass. The farther down the drop-down list, the more extreme it is considered. In many of your observations, you will only see the patron make a first pass and sometimes a second pass by a target. If you observe fewer than the four passes for which there is room to enter information in the data input sheet, just leave the information for that pass blank. For example, in this record, the patron only made two passes, so I left the cells in the third and fourth pass sections blank. At the end of the data input sheet, there is space to enter the demographic information, including the patron's apparent gender, age, race, and whether the patron was part of a group. If the patron was part of a group, you can record the amount of people in the group as well. After the demographic information, there is a space for any additional notes that might help explain the behavior or any other important aspect of the observation. Remember that if there is any information that you did not record or your library chose not to record, just leave that cell blank. The cells that are required to be filled in are the observation target in column E and the notice given to the target on the first pass in column F. Here is the instrument sheet filled out with the columns where each piece of information should be entered into the data input spreadsheet. If you need this guide to help you know what information goes into what cell, you may download this sheet separately. One of the most important rules while working with the data input sheet is to never insert new rows into the data as the rows that are already in the spreadsheet contain formulas that are necessary for the spreadsheet to analyze the data. If you need to add a new observation, just add it to the next blank row in the data input sheet. The other important rule is to never save the workbook with a file name that is different than how you downloaded it. The file name for the Excel workbook needs to be data input and analysis tool .xlsx, or else the data cannot be analyzed because the formulas in the analysis part of the workbook refer to the document's name when it was first created. If you do change the file name, the tables and charts in the analysis part of the workbook 
will not be able to update if new data is added. If you need to save multiple copies of the Data Input and Analysis tool, rather than saving the workbook under a new file name, we recommend creating a new folder and saving your document with its current file name in the new folder that might have a more specific title.